Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video for you guys. This time it's an episode of Blips, and it's going to be on all-in-one closed-loop liquid coolers. So many of you have probably already heard of CLCs or closed loop coolers. They're fairly high end liquid cooling units that are self-contained, easy to mount to your processor and in some cases even your graphics card. And they just generally give you better performance and are tend to be a little bit more expensive than like your aftermarket heat sinks and stuff like that and do usually a slightly better job but you know fairly close but the big thing is that they're generally quieter because you have more surface area to dissipate the heat and in this one I'm going to be going over the H105 from Corsair which is an Asetek based cooler which a not majority but a very large amount of the liquid coolers the CLCs out there are made by a company called Asetek and generally just rebranded and some little features potentially added in by other companies like Corsair NZXT, Fractal Design, Thermal Take, and other brands like that. There are some more unique ones out there, and let me know in the comments if you're interested in having a video that defines some of the differences between the two, another episode of Blips maybe next week or something. But in this one, we're gonna be mostly focusing on the Asetek cooler, although most CLCs, this general layout actually applies to. Sometimes there's slight variances though. So starting up top here with the radiator, this is generally a piece of aluminum, although occasionally it can be copper, but on Asetek units, it's basically always aluminum that the fluid runs through and then there are fins that go above that to cool it off. So the fins here are actually measured in fins per inch, which measures the density of the amount of fins that you have per inch. The higher the density, the stronger the fan you need to get the air across the fins at a decent speed to dissipate the heat, but you have more surface area to dissipate said heat. Now in here, there are chambers that run from one side all the way down in kind of a loop pattern like that over to the other side, and that's the direction that the liquid flows that is pumped through there, which we'll be getting to the pump in a moment. The fins are attached to that little like kind of a, it's not exactly a tube, but that tunnel. Uh, the fins are attached to that, which allows the heat to transfer directly from the water over to the tunnel or whatever you'd like to call it up onto the actual fins and that's what allows them to be cooled off. Now like I said the fluid goes in one side and comes out the other and the radiator actually is what houses the reservoir for the excess fluid. You always have to have a little bit of space for excess fluid when it comes to liquid cooling and that's what these kind of bulging edges are which is actually something really important to keep in mind because sometimes cases that are designed in, to handle specific size radiators will not handle specific size uh, CLCs due to the fact that they're slightly longer almost all of, the, all of them are slightly longer and sometimes won't fit if it's a very tight fitting area, whereas a custom one may fit better in that same said area. Generally though, you won't have too much of a problem. Most case manufacturers, especially anything that I'd say is made within the last like five or six years, is keeping closed loop coolers in mind and making sure to add a little bit of space for that. So generally if it says that it'll handle like a dual 120 millimeter radiator, like this guy here, a 240 millimeter, it has enough excess space for the uh, little bumps here on the end. So moving on from the radiator, if you go to the little connectors down here, these are actually uh, uh, sometimes swivel connectors, sometimes not. On the H105 in particular, they're not swivel connectors. Uh, it tends to make them a little bit more expensive if they're swivel connectors and also potentially more likely to leak. So they don't tend to do that as often, but I have seen them. And uh, they connect directly to the end of the radiator here, which the fluid flows in one side and flows out the other. Not exactly sure what the order is on this particular cooler, but uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of it flowing in and then flowing out the other side. They connect to the little reservoir here so that there's a little bit of excess fluid running directly down the tubes into the water block and pump assembly down there. Now from there, you've got tubes running down here. These tubes are made of different materials of rubber. They can be made of all kinds of different stuff. In fact, there are some um, expandable CLCs out there that use clear tubing. That's a different material. These ones here though are designed specifically not to have any kind of like leakage or evaporation over time. They tend to be pretty high quality tubes because obviously the cooler companies don't expect you to know a ton about water cooling. And so they don't want these here to have any kind of evaporation and you have to do any kind of maintenance on it. And they also don't want them to break. So they are extremely flexible. In fact, I'll go ahead and pick up the water block and do a nice little twist to them. As you can see, you're not gonna damage them. They're designed to be really flexible and that's that. Sometimes you will see them that are plastic though, like a ribbed plastic, and those ones don't tend to bend as easy, but they're 
pretty much just as durable, although the more common is a rubber material like this one here. Now, getting down to the bottom, you have the water block and the tubes actually connect through the fittings into the water block. These are usually fittings that are at a 90 degree angle and can rotate. As you can see on here, I can rotate them back and forth like this. And that's what allows the water block to be mounted in all kinds of different orientations and whatnot. It's uh, important that there's some kind of rotation there so that you're not actually putting twist on the tubing. Uh, they just move back and forth. It's usually not like enough to do kind of crazy tubing loops and stuff like that, but that's obviously not what these are designed for. Now that feeds directly into the pump down here. The pump assembly is almost always inside the water block. Again, there are some expandable CLCs that'll actually have it mounted like up on the radiator or something like that, such as those from Swift Tech, but those are realistically just a pre-assembled, pre-filled custom loop for you. So realistically, you don't necessarily include those when talking about CLCs. We mostly are talking about the Asetech designs and a few others out there, and they generally are going to have the pump built on top of the water block here. It's usually not a particularly high performance pump, and some of them are actually known to be louder than others. The H105 here is pretty quiet, as well as like my NZXT Kraken, which I have sitting in my server over there. They tend to be pretty quiet, but there are some that are louder. They're not particularly powerful pumps because they're only moving the fluid through one water block and up through one radiator. So obviously they're generally not going to be powerful enough to do any kind of expansion. That's one of the main reasons that closed loop coolers like this don't have fittings that allow you to expand on them. There are some people that have done some crazy mods and stuff to expand on them, but most of the pumps tend to not be powerful enough. They build the pumps for the actual unit that they're running through and anything over maybe like a triple 120 millimeter is going to be too much for most of the Ace Attack pumps. And even that is probably pushing it closer to its limit than we'd really like to approach. Now, those pumps generally connect through either a three pin or a four pin fan connector. The newer ones tend to connect through a four pin. In fact, some motherboards even have specific four pin slots for your actual pump. Uh, and that gives you a little bit of finer control using PWM over the pump speeds, which allows you to potentially uh, slow down the pump if it is a variable speed pump. In this case, it is not, but the newer like NZXT Kraken X62 have variable speed pumps. And that allows you to lower the speed down so that you maybe get slightly higher temperatures, but a quieter uh, noise level, which is important because sometimes the pumps when they're spinning fast can vibrate enough to actually be somewhat irritating. But like I said, this one here is just a three pin and they generally run at a fairly constant speed. Uh, you also have software that comes with the ones that are variable like the NZXT Kraken that can do all of the controls for you. So you don't necessarily have to think about it just because you have a variable speed pump. Don't worry, you're good. You're not gonna like, you know, burn out your system because your pump's running at zero RPM unless you, you know, change some kind of setting. Also keep in mind that most of the uh, actual RPM readout that come from motherboards except newer ones that have the custom mounts for the pump uh, pump power other than those they'll generally read the rpm incorrect sometimes it's zero sometimes it's 3000 just don't worry about that it doesn't mean your pump's not spinning if, if you can feel the vibration on the pump your pump's spinning you're fine you're good to go so on the bottom end of the pump you actually have a, a big copper slug. Now these can be aluminum, but they usually aren't in CLCs. There are some custom loop systems that use that, such as the ones from EK, but generally it's a copper slug. And on the other side of that copper slug are um, little, they're almost like fins like you'd see on a radiator, but more like channels and uh, they're technically called channels too, that the water is then funneled directly through, which is another reason that it's actually smart to put the pump right above the water block. It gives it its maximum torque with least resistance on the heaviest resistance part of the loop, which is going through those channels on the water block. Now you have to have those channels there to try and get as much water to contact the block as possible to remove the heat. So the fluid actually is pumped by the pump directly across those channels, which again are all part of the same copper slug, and the copper slug touches your CPU or GPU, um, generally you know, with thermal paste in between, and uh, the, the water flowing through there removes the heat and is able to be moved up towards the radiator for proper cooling. So the second to last thing to talk about when it comes to closed loop coolers is the fluid itself. Now CLCs generally have their own variant of distilled water mixed with something else built into them designed to last a very serious amount of time. Uh, with custom water loops, you're commonly going to be flushing the fluid every six uh, months, six months to two years. Whereas these can go sometimes six to 10 years without ever having to do maintenance. And by that time, generally the pump ends up failing. In fact, my NZXT Kraken that is in my server, like I said, is going on, I believe, 
believe over five years now and it is still running strong, doing a great job of cooling that system. So these AC Tech coolers are definitely built for reliability is what I would say. And like I said, the fluid isn't something that you have to pay too much attention to. They're generally, you know, there's not much variance in the fluid and the companies, you don't see them commonly like bragging about their fluids or anything like that because they're all based on the same thing and there's very, very negligible performance difference between different kinds of fluids. Although some of the ones that are not the Acetec designed coolers probably do have other kinds of fluid in them, especially the ones that maybe have clear tubing. They have something that is uh, easy to put dyes in so that you can change the color of it to your liking. Now the very last thing to talk about, and I'll be doing a dedicated video on different uh, types of fan bearings in the future, but your fans are extremely important. Most closed loop coolers or CLCs come with their own fans, usually one for each spot on the radiator, but not for one on each side of the radiator. So keep that in mind. These radiators generally support what's called a push-pull configuration where you actually put the radiator and then you sandwich two fans on top of it, which generally helps improve performance by a little bit or at the worst case scenario, let you turn the fan RPMs down a little bit lower to get even quieter operation, which is probably the main advantage when it comes to uh, CLCs. It's just quieter operation over, you know, what the um, like larger heat sinks and stuff tend to have, although it does depend specifically on what you are comparing. Now, Fans have two types of measurements. Again, I'll be doing more detail in another episode of Blips for you guys, but they have their uh, CFM, which is cubic feet per minute of airflow, and then they also have their static pressure. So the more important measurement of those two when it comes to radiators is the static pressure, which is generally measured in millimeters uh, H2O. Now, it's kind of a weird rating, not gonna get into a bunch of details, but as long as you're looking at ones that are uh, measured with that same rating scale, again, millimeters over H2O, uh, that is going to give you an accurate reading of that fan's capable static pressure at a specific RPM. The higher the static pressure, the better cooling you generally get, and also the uh, closer the fins, the higher the fin density can be because the fan has more pressure to actually push through those fins, which is you know going to be a more dense material. There's more material actually physically blocking the airflow from the fan. Most closed loop coolers are only going to come with a fan for each spot on one single side of the radiator. There are a few from like Corsair and stuff that are single radiators that come with a fan for both sides simultaneously. That is generally just because it is a single like 120 or single 140 millimeter uh, radiator. With the ones that are dual or triple radiators, it's very rare that you see them include fans for both sides, but you almost always can mount fans on both sides if you're interested in that aesthetic, performance, or noise level difference there. So that right there is everything you need to know about CLCs or closed loop coolers. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, let us know how we're doing. Let me know what you think of the quality of the videos. And of course, let me know what you think of the series blips and if you're enjoying it so far. And obviously don't forget to check out all the links that we have in the description to things such as our Patreon page. If you were interested in giving a monthly donation to help out the channel here, like I've said in other videos, all of the money there goes exclusively to more gear to improve production quality or more review samples if we don't get things directly sampled from a company. And uh, obviously down there, you've also got our website and our forums and our social media links. Social media is a very good way to get a hold of us through like Twitter and stuff uh, versus doing the YouTube comment section because YouTube comment section sometimes gets flooded and can be hard to uh, manage all of them. Although I do attempt to reply to every comment that comes in. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much for watching this episode of Blips.